Hello, everyone. Praise God. God is good. Amen. We stand at our friend's house. We're enjoying a good time. We've been here last Friday. We went to Death Expo on Saturday. Met several of you. And if you met me, we're happy to meet you and hopefully we can meet again. You can always email or drop a comment below. We'll contact you. And yesterday we went to Pastor Wilma's church. That's Michael and Darla's church. It's a very good church. The Pastor Wilma preached about. The Lord sending rain. So we want to back up just a little bit. Because <laughs> so I was thinking about this, and it was before that happened, we were talking about water and fire. That's very important and interesting to read about. Yeah. Welcome to Sign of the Word. <clears throat> I have a different cup today. So today, the prophets of Baal defeated, meaning more than one. So we're talking about Elijah in this story, and it's interesting how different churches sign Elijah. Redland signs Elijah, and our church signs it Elijah. So I have sent unto all the children of Israel. And gather the prophets together into Mount Carmel. I've actually touched there already the death group that went to Israel. It was very, it was a very cool and interesting place. It was beautiful to look at. You can see the whole city of Israel. Elijah came unto all the people. Elijah himself, he's very brave. He did not fear to be bold and make comments. He said, how long? I'll eat between two opinions. Which one is better, this one or that one? Yeah, you have two choices. If the Lord be God, follow him. If be Baal, is a false god and follow him. So again, the people's had this choice of if to follow God or follow Baal. And you can't follow both. You have to find one. You can't serve God and Baal at the same time. You have one choice and that's it. And the people answered him not a word. Very interesting. So the man of God is confronting him, saying, how long have you had this choice between God and Baal, and which one you will follow? And everyone stayed quiet. And Elijah said, okay, fine then. He said unto the people, I, even I only, Remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. That's a lot of false prophets of Baal. With Elijah himself being the prophet of the Lord. So here, Elijah starts to challenge the prophets of Baal. He says, let them therefore give us two bullocks. 
in young bulls. And let them choose one bullock for themselves. And cut it into pieces. And lay it on the wood. And put no fire under it. I will dress the other bullock and lay it on the wood and put no fire under it. So again, Elijah's saying, all right, prophets of Baal, all 450 of you, all right, bring us two bullocks. Prophets of Baal will pick first. You decide which one you want. You sacrifice it, you put it on the altar, but there is no fire under it. Understand this. And call ye on the name of your gods. I will call on the name of the Lord. Jewish word meaning Yahweh. So it's interesting. It's interesting here about the water and the fire. And he says, And the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. So again, he's challenging you to prove whose God is real. Whichever God answers our plea by fire, that's the one we will follow. And all, there's my favorite word, all. People answered. He said, it is well spoken. So kind of accepting the challenge. Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourselves and dress it first. For ye are many. So again, there's many, many of them, a huge group of the false prophets. And call on the name of your gods. But put no fire under. Verse 26. And they took the bullock, which was given them, and they dressed it. And called on the name of Baal, from the morning, even until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor that any answered. And they leaped. You know, some people look at the church crazy when we leap and, and praise God, but even they try to do this for their gods. And they leaped upon the altar which was made. Good, from morning to midday. I'm sure they're exhausted from jumping so much. It came to pass at noon. But Elisha mocked them and said, It didn't matter if he was a man of God. He might say, Cry louder. Oh. 
for he is God. Either he is talking Elisha believes in one God. There is no other one besides God himself. And we see here that he's saying, oh, maybe your gods are just busy talking to each other. So he can cry a little bit louder. Or is he pursuing? Getting busy. He's out doing things. Maybe your gods are just busy. So <coughs> Elisha is kind of is mocking him and bullying him here. Or he says, or maybe your gods are on a journey. Or peradventure he sleepeth. And must be wakened. So go ahead and cry louder. Go ahead and cry louder to get his attention. So it's kind of a mockery of them. And they cried louder. They cut themselves. Elijah didn't tell him to do that. He just said, cry louder. Maybe your God is busy or chatting with another God, or maybe he's asleep, or maybe he's busy off doing things. Maybe you need to cry louder to get his attention. But they did that plus cut themselves. There's nothing new under the sun. In the Muslim country, they, you know, tend to whip themselves for remorse. But they had done the same thing back in the day. After their manner, with knives and lancelets. And they're trying to get God's attention. No, and their God sees them like, oh, no, 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 don't hurt yourselves. So this is what they think is going to happen if they if they do harm to themselves. That will grab their God's attention. And they did this until the blood gushed out upon them. It came to pass when midday was past. And they prophesied until the time of the offering. So again, this is happening all day long. They're screaming out and trying to prophesy to their God. But there was neither voice nor any to answer. Nor any that regarded. Nothing. In verse 30. And Elisha said unto all the people, Is that enough? Come near me. And all the people came near unto him. Could you imagine those who are hurt and bleeding? You know, but that was on their own cost. We're, we're doing this action to see who has the real God. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. So again, after all the false prophets got done, they repaired the altar. And Elisha took 12 stones, according to the number of the tribes of the son of Jacob. To whom the word of the Lord came saying, Israel shall be thy name. Yes, Israel has forsaken God and has false idols, idols but he's, they're still God's people. Again, we had all the people of Israel plus the 450 prophets. We really don't have an exact number of how many who showed up. But it says, with the stones, he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And 
and he laid a trench about the altar. Again, this word trench here means to, to dig out or make a kind of a dip around the altar. And great as would contain two measures of seed. Which would uh, equal out to about three gallons. This is how much he, he dug about the around the altar. And he put wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said, Fill four barrels with water. And pour it on the burnt sacrifice. So again, he's prepared this altar. He's killed the bullet. He's laid it on there. And now he's telling them to pour, to pour four barrels of water onto the sacrifice and over the wood. And he said, do it a second time. And he said, do it a third time. So they did it a third time. Which would equal 12 gallons, which equal represented the 12 tribes of Israel. So again, this altar, this the sacrifice is drenching wet now. And the water, this is very important. And the fire is very important. And today, many people want to, you know, toss aside the water part, but the water is very important. We have the Holy Ghost of fire and the water baptism. We must have both. <clears throat> and the water ran round about the altar. And filled the trench. So again, remember this trench was deep enough to hold around three gallons. And there had been no rain. Everything was super dry. And water was very, very precious at this time because there was no rain. But again, he called for 12 barrels of water. Elijah had a lot of faith and didn't care about wasting the water. He said it will be a blessing later. He had so much faith that his God would show up that he was willing to, to waste that precious water. You know, I'm sure the bystanders were kind of worried about all that. But Elijah was like, I'm going to prove to you he's my God. It came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elisha, the prophet, came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel that, and that I am servant and that I have done all these things at thy word. So he's saying, you know, God show these people that you are the Lord and we are to follow you. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again.
So again, the very beginning, he's asking them, which God are you going to follow? Our Lord God Yahweh or Baal? You have to make a decision. Then the fire of the Lord fell. Same as the Holy Ghost. Consume the burnt offering, sacrifice, in the wood, in the stones. So again, I mean, even in today's time, stones are hard. You can build and, and build fires on them and they stay. But even the stones were consumed in the dust and licked up the water. Again, we have about 12 barrels full. So it licked up the water that was in the trench. It wasn't a small burn or a slow burn. It was a quick and fast lapping up. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces. And they said, the Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. So people woke up, they realized that Baal was worthless. They realized there was only one God. It's important to have that water and fire sacrifice. So again, it took one prophet of God to prove. And when Bell had 450, it showed nothing. One prophet could prove that Jesus was God. And Elisha said unto them, take the prophets of Baal, Let not one of them escape. And they took them again around 450. Elisha brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. And maybe we'll talk about the Lord sends rain another time. But again, it's important to follow the one true God. He has all power. I just want to give you the idea that the water and the fire is important for salvation. Hope you understand. God bless you. We love you.